All right, so you guys have been introduced to Chapter 3, right? I'm sure SI has been keeping up probably faster than Lecture. Have you guys touched on Chapter 3 yet? Acids and bases? No. All right, so first, the first thing that they usually teach you is cardio. So what does cardio mean? What's the C in cardio? Charge. So mom, can you relax with the dog I'm teaching? All right, I'm just, just letting you know. Um, so with the charge, the first thing that they have you learn is charge. And so acids, what do Going back to our definitions and uh, acids, Lewis acids, they want electrons. They accept electrons. And so intuitively, if something is wanting an electron, it must be fulfilling a positive charge. And so, again, positive charges will therefore be acting as an acid. So, again, looking at these examples... Which one will be the stronger acid? The one on the the one on the left here, or the one on the right? The right. So yeah, if you guys remember that acids generally have a positive charge compared to its counterpart, the positive charge will be the stronger acid. And so again, a lot of people try to memorize a bunch of shit. Um, if you remember acids, um, then you'll be able to know the know the bases because it's the complete opposite. So intuitively, the one with the negative charge will be the stronger base, right? Long. The second thing in cardio is atom. And so, does anybody know what the trend is for acidity when it comes to atom? Yeah, people are saying down. So down, the farther down you go, the bigger the atom. The bigger the atom, the more acidic it is. Um, and so here, which one would be more acidic, left or right? Right, because that chlorine is much is much bigger. That chlorine is way down here, while that fluorine is way up at the top. So, going along, this one here, which one is more acidic? That alcohol or that amine? The left, because that alcohol has that O, that oxygen is ever so slightly bigger than that nitrogen. So that oxygen, that alcohol is going to be more acidic. Next, residence. Does anybody know um, more or less residence will be more acidic? More. More residence will be more acidic. And so this example here, which one will be more acidic? First one, the one on the left. These rings... These benzene rings, these phenol rings, will be always have more resonance than much of anything. Much of anything else. These bonds and these bonds and atoms will be are able to track along the ring and produce a very stable molecule. Does anybody know which one will be more acidic here? Left or right? All right, so you guys are getting it. Next up is induction or dipole. Um, they kind of group it together. And so which one left or right will be? Okay, going back to chapter one and two, dipoles are induced by electronegative things because you have that electron pull. And so 
these again cardio is very useful when comparing molecules and so as Jolene said the left one will be a stronger acid here this one's a little bit more tricky you both you have both electronegative atoms of the fluorine and you have the uh, carboxylic acid which one is more, is a stronger acid the left or right why Jolene says right that's correct but why it's closer and so something with the dipole induction is that the closer something is so again you could look at the bond the number of bonds this one has is the fluorine is two bonds separated from the carboxylic acid this one is one okay so the closer something is the the more um, the more acidic it will be because the closer it is to one end because it, therefore it's creating a larger separation and therefore a bigger dipole Again, the reason why I'm not going over the bases is because if you remember, again, I, I just simply remember the acids. If you know what is it, what makes something more and more acidic, bases are the opposite. Um, okay, so last but not least, uh, orbitals. Orbitals. And so going along, does anybody know, you can probably type it out or just say it, the trend um, for, uh, for acidity, what makes something more acidic when it comes to orbitals? Leans on a roll. Yep. And so this one here, which one is more acidic? The first one. Yep. Not only is it because it, this one is SP, but SP also implies that it's a shorter bond line. Um, and so the shorter something is, the less orbital there is, and so the more acidic it is. So is that now just to go over some of you mentioned um, to go over a couple problems from the book this is what I'm doing so we have just a methyl in OH but a fluorine in OH so which one is more acidic You're right. Dumb question, but why? Yep. This is very electronegative. This is just a carbon with some H's. Now, this one, this one, a lot of people get tricked up on um, in um, at the end of the chapter. Um, so, just to, it's something kind of something to memorize. It's kind of an orgo two concept. Because um, it's dealing with ortho and para and a lot of resonance stuff. Yeah. Um, so just to. So Jolene has it right. This para position. If you have your substituents directly across, it's called para. You don't have to know that, just know directly across. Directly across will always be more acidic than this metaposition. It has to do with, Julian, it has to do with resonance. Um, you're gonna get into it in chapter two, but if you were to really draw a conjugate base and all the possible um, uh, resonance structures, you'll realize that this position is really hard to get to when it comes to resonance. Um, you'll deal with it in um, in uh, in orbit two, but this position and the para position directly across, directly next to, and directly across will always be much more acidic because of um, because it has to do with resonance. Uh, does everybody get that? Again, this one is more acidic because it's in this position versus versus this one. All right, so another thing. Let's see if I say it again. 
So curved arrows. I love them. So an aqueous solution, does anybody know what that means? Aqueous. It's a general chemistry concept. What does it mean if something is reacting in an aqueous solution? Water. It's in water. Aqueous. It's always implying that there is water. So what water will do is, yes, it will dissolve a salt-like um, salt -like molecule. And this right here, we have this metal. These metals, these ionic like compounds will be able to dissolve in the water. And so if you ever see an aqueous solution and you have a metal, anything in that first group, that first column on the periodic table, anything that has that Na, um, the magnesiums, the lithiums, anything like that, it'll dissolve away. So you can almost cross it out. It'll just be floating in solution. It's not going to be bonded to anything. So what you're really going to be reacting is your OH in this. So what I like to do is I like to draw draw it out. So you have this CH2 And so you have all of you. Which, okay, first and foremost, which one's the acid? Which one's the base? You talk too fast. Mom, I'm talking. Oh no, but too fast. Sorry. Ask them if you're talking too fast. And then Everybody talking. gets it. Mom, they're live. They hear everything. Do you guys think Michael's talking oh. too fast? What do you guys answer? think? You're talking too fast. I can't understand it. No, they're good. Sergio says no. Tell Mom, they get it. They have to keep up. It's organic chemistry. Get with it. Be nice to them. Right. It's my house. Right? Anyways, so what's the acid? What's the base? Okay, Jolene has it right. Bases. Um, Jolene, you have it right. Uh, anything, if you remember those trends, the cardio. Things with a negative charge have those extra lone pairs of electrons, and so it's going to be willing to react with them. And so this also the negative charge implies that it wants a hydrogen, it wants a proton to fulfill that negative charge. And so where is it going to get it from? Where's the flow of electrons going to go? Except the proton. Yep. From where the, where is it going to get it? No, this is Dylan. This OH. This one's the base, and so it's going to want to take a um, take a hydrogen um, from the acid. If this is the base, this one's the acid, and so this lone pair is going to be reacting with this H here. Therefore, this will be going that way. So what you're going to be creating is water. Does that make sense still? So going along with this one, I like to, again, I like to draw it out because it's much easier to see the electrons. So what's the acid, what's the base? Yep. And so 
what's going to happen. This lone pair, is, okay, because again, this has its full octet, right? Yep, and I have it there, right? So again, the bases, again, you're going to get in, this chapter is the, the foundation for almost the rest of the semester. Starting from, starting in chapter six, it's going to be reactions all the way through. And so you're, you're really going to want to know the flow of electrons. And so the bases are always going to be the one that's attacking something, the one that's pushing its electrons somewhere to do the reaction. So let's see what it's going to do. Julian, you have it right. So this, this hydrogen, this, this lone pair here is going to grab that hydrogen. And so that's going to, in the products, in the products, it's going to look like that. And here, the chlorine itself is going to be taking this bond itself. And so in the products, you're going to have this bonded to the H and the Cl floating around with a negative charge. Does that make sense, everybody? So another aspect that um, should be touched on is whether or not something will occur. So can everybody see this? I know it's kind of it's kind of small, but can everybody see this? Sorry. It, again, does anybody know what, um, if, if you can figure out what you're looking for when something, if you're asked if something is occurring or not, what are you looking for? Anybody know? It's fine if you don't. All right, so, yeah. So you're looking at the strengths. So if, you start off with something strong. Starting off with something strong, you go to something weak. That's what you want. That's what's going to occur. And so this one, looking at here, going along with cardio, are both of these reactants strong or weak? Anybody know? Bueller. Yeah, so if you have, again, that positive charge is kind of key. Um, you're going to want, if again, you, if you're going from weak, if you have weak reactants, the products are going to be its strong conjugate, right? If you have a strong conjugate in the products, it's not favorable. It's not what you want. Is anybody is everybody confused on is are people confused on that or does that make sense? You always want to start with both strong 
asses and bases, cardio, pussy, cardio. Again, these are just examples. What I'm trying to dr drill in is this concept here. If you, you have to start, again, you, he's probably going to give you a PKA table, but one thing you can recognize is um, using use a PKA table. You could. If he gives you the, if he gives you the um, PKA table on the exam, which he should because it's awesome bases, um, uh, the lower the PKA, right? The lower the PKA, the stronger, stronger the acid, right? So it, you bo both your reactant, regardless of whether it's an acid or base, if you start with something strong, you want the products, you're going to, the products are going to be weak. And so th therefore it's going to be favorable. The reverse of that is unfavorable. If you start with something weak, and you, therefore you end with something strong, it's not favorable and therefore the reaction is not going to occur. Does that make sense to everybody? So to polish off, He may throw in a Gibbs, a Gibbs, um, Gibbs free energy. It's, he's not going to give you anything more than one or two, but could just be the difference between a few points to get in you and I would be. Um, and so does anybody know what type of um, reaction is acids and bases? Is it exergonic or endogonic? He says endergonic. Anybody else think differently or concur? All right, so it is acids and bases. Those that are favorable are exergonic. And so you're going to be going from more stable to least less stable right so because you're going from more to least less stable you're also releasing energy and so you may throw the symbol out there that throw back to Chen Ken if Delta G if Gibbs free energy is less than zero or negative is it spontaneous or non-spontaneous? Correct. It's spontaneous because because uh, it's because there's excess energy. It's going to favor the forward reaction, and therefore create the product that you want. And intuitively, it is exogonic. And so the reverse, if delta G is greater than zero, you have an endo and it's non-spontaneous because you don't have that excess energy to use to create that forward. And so if anything, you're going to either lie on equilibrium or be pushing back Close the reactants. That makes sense, everybody. All right. Does before we finish up, we only have a few minutes left. Um, does anybody have any particular questions? Oh, 
before I forget, there is one other thing, whether it's in your SI or something like that, but it's a relatively simple example. This. Mm -hmm. Also, these arrows just mean something is in equilibrium. Um, but in an aqueous solution, will does anybody know if this will occur or not occur? So something to keep in mind is that this in the aqueous solution, this is going to dissociate. So you end up with that, right? Um, but this alkyne is what's key. The aqueous solution, there's water. And water is a stronger acid than this alkyne. And so remember, the stronger things are going to react with each other. And so this is going to react with that instead. It's going to react with that instead, creating an OH, and which is too weak. If you have a base that's too weak, it's not going to deprotonate something. It's not going to deprotonation is another fancy word of saying it's taking a hydrogen from something, You're deprotonating something. And so this, this water is going to react with this here, creating this, this ion here. But this is too weak to deprotonate, deprotonate the alkyne. Does that make sense, everybody? And so the reaction becomes unfavorable. That's, so that's something that you're definitely going to have to look out for. If something, if you're given, you have to keep an eye, uh, look out for the solution that's in, that it's in. So if you're given an aqueous solution, you have to keep in mind, will the water or the reactant be st a stronger or, um, or not as strong acid than what are you given in the reactants? Does that make sense, everybody? So just, just to, if you guys want to stay, another example is in, in ethyl alcohol. And methine, this is in your book, by the way. Um, I believe it's 3.29, um, but you're given This example here. So you have this molecule here, and you're reacting it in this. So will this reaction occur or not? Anybody know? It won't, because again, the um, the uh, this is too weak of a base. It's too weak of a base. Well, here you're gonna have these electrons too weak of a base um, to remove a proton from from that triple bond. Remember that triple bond is very, very strong. 
And so this is too weak of a base to remove from that. And so you're not going to have a product, right? Because in acids and bases, we're primarily moving around electrons to fill its charges and this and that. Um, and so this base isn't going to be able to take away the hydrogen that this is holding because it's a weak base. This is a weak, weaker base. And so a too weak of a base is going to react, uh, isn't, isn't going to deprotonate. It's not going to remove this proton from the ethyne. Does that make sense? It's kind of a similar concept to this one. You guys good? All right, so time is up. And so does anybody have any uh, questions in particular? All right, before you guys go, um, I do want to say and emphasize that there will be drawing going forward. If you haven't already, there will be drawing going forward in the bonding assignments. And so definitely, you know, Mark sent it out. I believe I may have um, um, put the link somewhere as well, but Mark, check your messages. Mark included a link in a message to practice the drawing tool for the bonding assignments. And that could be, that can easily make or break the one or two points you could, you could lose um, just drawing something wrong because it's very picky. The system's very picky. And so definitely, Practice the drawing tool, okay? You can look it up online. Um, so I don't know as much about um, his status on lecture, but if he posted the questions, um, but if he, okay, if he's been posting videos for chapter one and two, it's very likely that he's going to be um, putting stuff up for chapter three because of how high yield it is for the rest of the semester. Um, so yeah, hope that answers your question. Um, but yeah, definitely um, be, uh, be looking, uh, <clears throat> go back, find a link, or look it up. Um, I believe it's called the Marvin, Marvin, Marvin sketch or something like that for organic chemistry. Um, practice, practice the drawing tool, um, and that definitely makes things a whole lot easier, especially because the assignments are time. All right, that is, uh, that's basically what I have for you guys today. Um, so hopefully uh, you guys, hopefully you got a, provided a good foundation for, for this uh, coming um, coming assignment, and I'll, uh, I'll see you guys next week.